Hey everyone, back again with a quick update on um, the rocket stove over here behind me. Um, we're doing more testing. We had a bit of a delay. Um, my Everlast Power iMig 200, uh, that's what I was using for a lot of the welding and stuff like that. Um, I placed an order for some um, welding wire through HTP America, it's usaweld.com. Um, good company, um, good products, really good price on their welding wire. If you guys are not familiar with that stuff, um, with their prices over there, go check them out. You can get two 10 pound spools of 0.03 um, ER70-6 um, MIG wire for 35 bucks or $36 um, with free shipping. Um, the problem was is that they, when they do that, they send it um, two, do, two day, priority flat rate box through the um, US Postal Service and the US Postal Service sucks and what should have been two days three days max turned into seven days um, so I was down for the count with no welding wire because I waited till the last minute to order some um, so it's partially my fault but it is what it is um, got my wire and came out here to, to do some more work and make a couple things and, and, and do some more testing because we're getting ready to, to wrap up as far as the final design of this for the first prototype. Um, so let me show you what I've done today as far as um, the air compressor tank because I've done a little bit of work on that. So, okay, so we got this Craftsman. Um, I'm assuming it's uh, about a 30 gallon compressor tank. 33 maybe, I don't know. I haven't even bothered to look, doesn't really matter. Um, I cut off the, the compressor pump bracket off the top. There was also two round tubes that were laid on here horizontally, here and here, um, for the handle, because this thing has wheels on it, so you have the handle and you pull it back like a dolly. So if you look over here, that's one of them. The other one rolled off someplace, and that's the the bracket for the compressor motor. So I cut those off with my Everlast Power Plasma 50. That's this machine sitting over here with the ton of air hose on top of it. Great little machine. Um, made quick work of that job. <clears throat> I did blow through right here and here. So once I figure out what uh, where we're gonna what we're gonna do with this, 100% sure I'll fix that. Um, that's as simple as grinding this out a little bit to clean up the, the dross and burn crap inside of here. And then just taking my Everlast Power I make 200 and, and dropping a weld bead in there and then grinding it smooth. Um, I'm not going to do it just yet because we're going to cut the top of this off somewhere, probably around this vicinity, um, and put a piece of stainless or just a much thicker piece of, of metal. I'm assuming this is about eighth inch, I'm not 100% sure, but judging by the hole where it blew through and just my experience with compressor tanks, it's probably about eighth inch. So the problem with that is the rocket stove, the heat riser is going to be blowing heat right at this point on this stove. This is not going to be a chimney like it is in our test, you know, our testing right here. Um, the chimney's not going to be here. Okay, the chimney is going to be down here on the side because the heat riser is inside of here. The heat comes up to the center, hits this, and then the air goes around the outside, down inside of between this and that. Okay, so the chimney is down there, so you're going to have a really hot point right here. Um, get warpage, all kinds of issues because this is mild steel and not stainless steel, not a good quality stainless steel. What's going to happen is you're going to end up with scaling, um, potential rust situations, and just some, the, mail, the metal failing at a very rapid pace because it's being put under extreme temperatures. Um, we're estimating that this top section here is going to be upwards to 700 plus degrees. Um, that's the goal. We want this tank to get hot, but we also want the air to cool down dramatically before it starts heading out the chimney, okay? I think we're gonna be fine there, but we need a hot spot, a nice big surface that gets nice and hot, 
so that it'll radiate the heat out into the shop. Okay, so that's what I got going on with this. I'm probably going to have to cut the tires off of that eventually. Um, if you look down here, you got the weld seam down here. We're going to cut it along that weld seam and pull the whole top off of it so it'll be like a cover that goes over the top of that. And the bottom piece will be used, but we'll put a plate across it first. Fill it up with its insulation and then put the, the insert, this, inside of this and put the, the tank over the top. If you don't understand, just keep watching. You'll figure it out. So, um, we're probably going to have to cut the tires off so that we can raise this higher up off the ground because we have to make room for an ashtray. But we're still trying to decide on, on final design. Um, we'll figure it out. You'll see what happens. So, anyway, this is what I got going on over here. Okay, let me zoom back out. Um, I'm doing some test burning. You see here that I just have some plates over the top of this. I just put it down. I don't know why I did that. It's sealed. Um, it is what it is. Here, let me remove it so that you can actually see what we're doing without this crap in the way. So, here's the setup. Now granted, again, this is going to change. This whole section from here to here is going to be different, okay? Obviously these bricks are not going to be able to stick out of that tank and stay together. They'll fall apart. So I need, we're, we're trying to finalize a design that will allow us to still use the, the, the fire bricks but encapsulate them in steel. So all you'll see is like a, a steel square tube like this that'll come out but the fire bricks will be inside. Um, the pellet feeder will come out. It'll have a hopper so you can put 40 pounds in there instead of just this little bit. Um, we're working on a design where we can have a, a little tray that'll slide into the into here um, with the burn basket for the pellets, um, which will provide a, a first burn area and then a second burn area for the pellets as they fall through the, the basket. Um, so we're working on all of that. That's what all this is. We're just trying to, at the moment, we're working on air fuel mixture. So, as you see here, I have the, the air inlet cut down dramatically. Um, I would say about two thirds of it is, is closed off. So, and I'm doing that to see if we can increase the, the amount of time that we're, we're getting, you know, as far as efficiency with the pellets. Um, right now, this chamber, and I don't, I don't have the volume with me right off the top of my head. This right here is lasting about an hour and a half the last time we checked it. And that's what the, it was, it was running free flow. Um, we also had some air gaps in here and some air gaps up here. So we want this to be as accurate as possible. So I took some of this, this stove pipe tape, which is like aluminum. It's not light, that's exactly what it is. Um, I sealed off everything, okay? No air gaps. I don't want no air gaps because air gaps are gonna change my readings. So I'm, I'm looking for it to be a, a solid, tight seal. So that was the other reason why I had all this stuff up here is because I have the, the insulating rope inside of here for a gasket and I'm trying to give myself a, a nice, solid, you know, airtight, system so that this opening here is as accurate as, as accurate as I can get from my readings. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to, you know, this whole thing is full of pellets right now. I'm going to burn that until it burns out. Find out how long it took. Then I'm going to open this all the way back up. Burn it. Find out how long it takes. Okay. The last time I burned this, I had those air gaps, like I said, so I want to know what it does without the air gaps. Um, once I get those two readings, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to take my Everlast Power Plasma 50, and I'm going to cut a hole right here, okay? Pretty decent size hole, and I'm going to use some of this tape here to cover that hole. And what that hole is going to do is it's going to provide me uh, a way to limit the amount of draft that is going across the fire. So if I open this hole up, 
there's going to get air, we're going to have air sucking in through here. Okay, if we have air sucking in through here, the amount of air that has to come in through here is going to be limited. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do. And, and hopefully what that does is increase my burn time. Um, but I'm also checking my temperatures right here. I'm looking for the hottest temperature I'm getting in this entire area. And, and I'm recording that number at the beginning of the burn. I'm recording it at the end of the burn. I'm recording it like in the middle of the burn because I want to find out how, how dramatic is, are, these, are these changes, you know, are these changes making a dramatic effect on the temperature? So I'm looking at all of those aspects. So that's what we have going on right now. Um, I'll get back with you guys and let you know where we're at as far as those numbers are concerned um, and just share that information with you and we'll keep going from there. Next video you'll see that we'll, we'll finalize the design as far as this is concerned and get this compressor cut open and, and start getting this ready to, to assemble. So thanks for watching. Like always, subscribe, comment, like. Um, go like our Facebook page. The link is in the description. Go check out our website. That, that'll be down in the description as well. It's alvarezmetalworks.com. And if you're on Twitter and you want to follow us on Twitter, that link will be below as well. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and I'll talk to you soon.